Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. This is Walter Sabo, who you know from our show many times. Okay, if you don't, uh, Walter is uh, has a is broadcast under the name Walter Sterling, but I know him as Walter Sabo, and uh, he uh, he does you do a program uh, what on Sunday nights, right? Sunday nights from uh, 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. Eastern, Eastern, 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Yeah. Pacific. Yeah, and you do it from your uh, your uh, laundry. From this room. This room here. Okay. Uh, this is like the catch-all room, what, in the basement? It's the laundry room. It's the laundry room. Now, here's the thing. It's the laundry room, but you do your show... Uh, I hope you don't mind me having you up here as Walter Sabo. If you'd like me to change it, I can change it to Either Walter Either way, it does, it's, it's totally up to you. Anyway, well, next time I'll make a Walter <laughs> Sterling. Then. But anyway, he works under the name Walter Sterling. He does his show on uh, Sundays, and he has been doing it from his laundry room. And that was a big deal that you did from your laundry room. You always made a big deal out of it, you know. Yes, so, now I barely mention it. Yeah. Then you moved. Yes. So did you have to, like, make sure you put your new studio in the laundry room, and was it big enough to hold the laundry Well, obviously it is. You know. Well, it's grandiose to call it a studio in either location. Mm -hmm. um, and the beauty of digital world is that I need a mixer, a Comrex, a microphone, and that's about it. That's it. So I can do it from anywhere. Right. You could come here, plug it in. I could come there go. and plug it in. And then you could go to Hawaii, plug it in. Do your yes. There. Um, the only issues are that the um, it takes longer to set up than it should. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. So it's more difficult. Uh, there are there are other ways of doing it now, aren't there? There's a thing called he called a Comrex, which you probably should explain to the non-initiated, is a device which then allows you to send your thing to wherever the the home base is, right? The first many years, I did it with software, mm -hmm. not hardware. I did it with software with an app called Q Go Live. Mm -hmm. And that was actually as good as the Comrex. The Comrex is a small box that interfaces with the internet and your sound mixer. Yeah. And uh, does whatever happens in the secret box. Right. And all you have to do is plug your mixer into your Comrex, and the Comrex right. calls wherever it's got to go for the thing to be uh, sent out into the world. All right. Right. One second, please. I'm going to make you louder. Oh, you're going to make me louder. Oh, okay. Uh, here in this studio. Okay. See, I actually have a studio here. Yes. I'm, I'm not in the laundry. If I were in the laundry room, I wouldn't have room anyway. Hold on a second. Yeah. I'm gonna, I, I, I didn't realize what was happening. Hold on. Oh, okay. All right. I have well, to do one thing, sir. Uh, uh, okay. Thing. Okay. Um, no, you have an actual studio, mm -hmm. and it's very nice. Mm -hmm. And impressive. Um, darn it. Oh, here. Do you want to start this over again? No. What fun is that? <laughs> uh, that is no fun. That's what I love about, about, about doing this stuff. It, it, it's it really, no matter how sophisticated you think any broadcast is on, po or podcast is on the Internet, they're all still flying by the seat of their pants. You know. um, anybody who says that they're an expert yeah. on digital tech yeah. is lying. Yeah, yeah. 
There is no such thing. And um, they're just not. Yeah. So anyway, uh, you've been uh, you've been going through the whole COVID thing, right? But you've had the- I got both. Yeah. yeah, I got both COVID shots. Yeah, and um, the second one made me deathly ill. I couldn't move in my bed. I couldn't roll over for a day. Really, it was horrible. Marjorie had had bad effects the second day, the first day, second day. And then it, it, it sort of went away instantly. After about 30 hours, it mm-hmm. just went away. Right. And I've been fine ever since. Yeah. Well, now, now, now you're, you're cooking. You know, you can go out and do things and not have to worry. Right? Right. Because, I mean, let's face it. We were living, all of us, in fear during the last year. And, uh, um, you know, this kind of fear that we, we didn't know exactly how you could get it. We just knew it was out there waiting to get you. And so uh, you get a package and you'd spray it with disinfectant, you know, because we thought maybe it could come in that way. Uh, eventually we got bolder and realized that that wasn't a really a, a, a problem, okay? But uh, how did it, how was it, you pretty much have been in the house for a year, right? No. Um, <clears throat> I've been in the house pretty much until... The, the weirdest thing is I'm always confused about what month it is. I'm in the house until about Christmas. Mm-hmm. And in Ohio, which is where I live, yeah, most of those restrictions went away in December. Mm-hmm. So people have been out since November, December without a problem. Um, the schools, however, didn't go back into session until January, February, mm-hmm. and the kids were home until January, February, which was horrible for the, some of them. And this is what was interesting, Alex. There are kids who are introverts and thrive on at-home, in-home learning. Right. They're thrilled that they don't have to deal with. They the don't have to be social or class. anything else, right? Right. Okay. Thrilled. Yeah. Then there are other kids that are extroverts. They need to be surrounded by other kids in order to even think. Mm-hmm. And I have one kid who last semester was a straight A student, and this semester has four Fs. And the difference is in school versus at home. And I have another kid who's at Syracuse University. Mm-hmm. And the minute they arrived, they put them into quarantine immediately so mm-hmm. she was stuck in her dorm room from the minute she arrived and has been stuck in her dorm room ever since since september despite that she got covid two weeks ago how did how did, she, how did she get it does she know they deliver food yeah um they loosen the restrictions a, a little bit but she's not sure yeah However, there are kids like her who, when alone in a room for day after day, it makes them crazy. It yeah. taps into all their neuroses. Right. And she, she's had horrendous problems with it, whereas to be left alone in a room for weeks on end would be a gift to me. Mm-hmm. I can't imagine anything greater than to be alone in my room. <laughs> when, I, when I was a kid, Alex, and I heard the Beach Boys song, In My Room, mm-hmm. I thought that was a happy song. <laughs> I thought that is a goal. Yeah. Yeah. So so she was kind of stuck in her room, and she she got COVID, but you I, you wrote me a note. You said it was just kind of very minor. She just got... Blessedly minor because of her age and overall health, and it only showed up with a sinus infection in her nose. That was it. That was it. And gone, no problem. Gone, fine. no problems. Yeah. Is she, has she gone to get the shot now, or are they... Weirdly, she got COVID and then got the shot. Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. But you know, uh, she's she's safe now. So are they opening up the college a bit? Uh, no, and this is insane. Yeah. So there she is at a big private university. She's taking all of her courses last semester and this online in her dorm room. I'm like, what? If if she left campus, get this. Yeah. If she left campus, she'd be disqualified for her scholarships. Oh, God. And um, when she was in quarantine a couple weeks ago, mm-hmm. before she got it, they quarantined them in a uh, hotel room because mm-hmm. it was her next door neighbor got 
COVID. They quarantine her in a hotel. Yeah. If she left her room in the hotel, she would have been suspended. Hmm. This is some college experience. Yeah, this is not what she signed. That's not what a kid signs up for when they're going to college. No, and just to make it dramatic and truthful, uh, she also had the horror show uh, last semester of her boyfriend being killed by a campus bus. What? Her boyfriend was killed by a campus bus, almost like a bad novel. In a year... When COVID could kill you, he got killed by a bus. He got killed by a bus. That's amazing. She Mm -hmm. must have been devastated. She had to come home. She tried for a couple days, and she said, you got to bring me home. So she uh, went on an academic leave of absence and picked it up again in January. And actually, she's academically doing great now. So Yeah, yeah. But that's 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 something to suffer. You know, horrible. I mean, you know, at her age, probably that was her current boyfriend. You know, it was her current boyfriend. Yeah, her current boyfriend. So she maybe would have had several others, but to have that happen to your boyfriend that you have now is just—it's devastating. And he was a good kid. He was a good boyfriend. We liked him. Yeah, uh, he was good for her. So this was very sad. You know, you know what? I I have a friend, Bob Rubin. He's a comedian. And he, he always likes to tell me the story, or I like to drag it out of him, about the night he brought somebody home to his place. And they got romantic, and they then, as things evolved, had sex. And when they were through having sex, she had a heart attack and died. <laughs> I said, how did, how did you feel about sex after that? He said, I didn't have it for several years. Several years. Several years. He said, you, you, you know, you have somebody die while you're having sex and you think maybe you got some kind of pox on you or something like that. Yeah, that's terrible. But uh, how have you been doing, I mean, dealing with all of this? Because I really haven't talked to you within this year. We've, we've had some communication. Well, um, I've been happy that the world has had to adopt uh, a lifestyle that I enjoy. Mm-hmm. That they're staying at home quietly, not right. bothering other people. Right. Uh, Binge watching shows like uh, I watched Younger. Oh, but oh Younger, Younger. Show. I got into Younger. We did that a while back here. That was great. Um, yeah. You know, but I'm I'm so behind that. Don't be surprised if I say to you, let me tell you, I know about this great comedy you got to watch. It's called I Love Lucy. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm I'm way behind, but I but the show that I love, yeah, uh, is Below Deck. Have you watched Below yeah, Deck? Yes, I. Uh, please don't let me admit it. Okay, I don't want to have to admit it. The way I explain it to people is, I say these are Australian high school dropouts who have a lot of trouble getting along, and. It, and that's what it is. It's Australian well, high school well, that, dropouts. Well, that's seat. one of the series. I watch Below Deck Mediterranean. Yes. Uh, which is a different show, oddly enough, from Below Deck, Below Deck, whatever. And 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 I got hooked on that one because I like I like the Mediterranean and you know that's. Yeah, there are three of them, as you know: Mediterranean, Below yeah. Deck, and Sailing Yacht. Yeah. By the way, for those of you just tuned in, folks, you're really getting some great programming here where we're discussing our favorite crappy programs yeah uh, do you want to know my other go to yes um, um, uh, and I, I uh, you know it's one of those shows okay that I go to when I want to have something to watch and there's nothing else to watch Pawn Stars it's a great show because it's always available they have 17 seasons <laughs> yes <laughs> there's se- the, actually there are 17 seasons and it has this beautiful rhythm. Every episode's the same rhythm. Right. Um, every, and, but I'll tell you what I've realized it's like yeah. and why I think it's so appealing. It's like Star Trek. Think about it. it really? Okay. Like <laughs> this is what I got to hear. What? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. There is a captain. Mm-hmm. And we're comforted by having a captain. Right. There is a crew that scurries to try to. Oh, oh you're talking about captain. below deck. 
What? You're talking about Below Deck, not about Pawn no, Stars. No, Pawn Stars. Oh, really? Okay, keep going. Pawn Stars has a captain. Yeah, okay, right. Everybody scurries around him to try to please him. Oh, okay. Yeah. The dad. Mm -hmm. He's never pleased. They've right. always made a mistake. Right. And the just like on Star Trek, strange people come on deck <laughs> offering uh, gifts. Yeah. And they're never happy with the gifts, and then they must leave. <laughs> and it's, it's the same thing, but we are comforted as a culture mm -hmm. having somebody in charge and making a final decision. Captain Kirk made a final decision. Uh, the, the dad on, on Pawn Stars makes a final decision, and no one disputes it. Right. Right. They argue with him right to the point of decision, and then it's done. The interesting thing to me about Below Deck mm -hmm. on Bravo, mm -hmm. uh, culturally about Below Deck mm -hmm. on the same channel with Real Housewives, is Bravo likes Real Housewives. They promote it. They talk about it. It's part of who they are. It's all part of the Bravo world. They don't talk about Below Deck. You don't see promos for Below Deck. You don't see Andy Cohn talking about Below Deck. And when he does, he's terrible at talking about it. Yeah. So it's very interesting. They they don't like it either, but I like it. Yeah, well, I, I, I like it, and I think it's a good show. And But uh, Pawn Stars uh, is uh, is my go-to show because it's kind of, I think it's kind of like Antiques Roadshow with, a, with, uh, with uh, uh, mouth breathers. Uh, you know, uh, it's because antiques road show with things we can afford. I mean, all, on antiques road show, the people who are judging the antiques are very erudite and so on. These guys are just absolute slobs. Yeah, they are are uh, redneck to the nth degree. Okay. Yeah, and and they're they're making a decision on whether they like your your stuff or not. You know, so I, I love. And they're that in show. Vegas. Yes. And and I just I just love it because people bring in some of the most amazing crap, and then a lot of, then they go that's crap, you know. Or the guy comes in thinking he's got something that that that's worth a hundred thousand dollars, and it turns out it's a forgery, you know. Yeah. And they know all this, you know. They know how to do all this, and uh, I, uh, I I love the show. I just love the show. Just um, amazing for me. So that so that's what you did during COVID. Was yeah, I, there was another show I watched every episode of. Yeah. Um, See, what was what, it was amazing to me about Younger was it wasn't until I got Paramount Plus that I that I started. With, I came upon it and I watched all, either six ep, six seasons at that point, and I watched all six seasons. And we sat there and went, "We love this show. Why didn't we discover this? You know, six years ago." Yeah, and and then I'd say to my friend like Shecky, and I'm we're watching this thing called Younger. He says, "Oh, you're just watching Younger," you know. So uh, it, it was a show that we discovered that the rest of the world already had discovered, you know. And it's a good little show. It's a good show, and what's interesting about it is, it's very much like Sex in the City in that the city is the co-star. Well, the I mean, the, it's done the by the same guy that did the Sex in the City. Darren Star, so, right. So it had has that same feel to it, you know. Um, and the star of uh, Younger is, in fact, a Broadway star, big, huge, big Broadway, Broadway star. star. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I mean, it it, it that uh, that works. And uh, let's see here, what else? We just watched The Serpent on Netflix. No, I'm not going to watch them. It's it's pr it's pretty brutal, you know. Yeah, I'm not going to watch. Them. Why aren't you going to watch it? Why are you? Because I like shows that are happy. Oh, well, then don't watch what Marjorie was watching last night. This new Kate Winslet show. Oh, my wife's watching that. I saw two episodes of that. No, there's only one episode so far. Only oh, one well, I watched, it felt like two. Um, wasn't it depressing? Yes, but I could watch it because it wasn't, the purpose of it wasn't violence. When the purpose of a show is to shoot and kill and maim, I can't watch it. Yeah, yeah. The the purpose of that show, I'm not sure yet, it but just makes I, me, I could it live makes with me, that It show. makes me feel uncomfortable. 
And I've gotten to a point where I go, I don't like something that makes me feel uncomfortable. So why did I watch did you, The Serpent? You know. Oh, for you, did you watch The King of Harlem? Uh, you mean The Godfather of Harlem. Did you watch that? Yeah. Yeah, I, that was pretty good. Um, yeah, I think so. You know, that was pretty good. Uh, because I mean, and I, you know, because I live in Harlem, it kind of has an extra appeal to it. You know, uh, but uh, yeah, I I like that show. I also, you know, what I also like. Do you watch Pennyworth? My wife does. I don't. Great, great show. Great show. I don't watch that. Why don't you watch it? What was it? Um. Does it have a lot of knives and killing? It's it's kind of a comic book, is what it oh. is. It, it I, I I would give it a little bit of a try. I think you might like it. You know what oh. it is? It's the story of uh, Batman's butler when he lived in oh. England. Okay, Alfred Pennyworth, uh, and it it really works very well. It's a terrific show. You know, so I like it. Yeah, I've been happy with it. So. But uh, so so this is how you've been spending your time, you know. You were a, a broadcast consultant, which is is that a business anymore? Yes, but not for me. Um, it's um, I haven't done it in eight years, and I had I had the best ride ever. Yes, you and did. And then then it was done, and I'm like I'm not. I know this will sound arrogant and horrible. Mm -hmm. I was a Four Seasons Ritz Carlton consultant. I only saw a future of Motel Six, <laughs> and I, I didn't want to do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, uh, because the business is it's terrible right now. You know, self-inflicted. Self-inflicted. And, you know, I mean, I think everything's gone over to the Internet. I mean, all these companies that were doing radio are now trying to get into the podcasting business. Which and, is a stupid business. Well, it's a stupid business, and it's a business that has very, very little return like they're used to. That's what I know. But here's the thing. Yeah. Notice that Spotify and Pandora and all of those companies mm -hmm. call themselves radio. They'll sit with you at seminars and at conventions and mock the radio medium, but then it's Pandora radio. It's Spotify radio um, because they haven't, they can't come up with a better descriptive or a more powerful but or they an effective are, they one. They aren't radio. They're, they're not they're radio. Na to begin with, they're not broadcasting. They're narrow casting. And they're not live. Yeah, and they're not live. And... Uh, but they've all tried to get into it, and all they're doing is just their normal radio programs as, uh, you know, as a podcast, which is kind of what I do, you know. You invented. I invented, yeah. But there's just too many people on the Internet. Now, you, you know, they, what they come up with, uh, I think iTunes just recently said they have three million podcasts. Yeah. On iTunes. Well, as my, I have one little podcast. How do I get through that noise is the question, you know. And I keep asking myself that and whether it's worth it or not. Well, yes, it's worth it if you enjoy it mm -hmm. and if you get satisfaction out of it. Yeah. Uh, but you know about you know about Fiverr, right? About who? F I V V E R. I, I I've heard about it. Tell okay, so F I V V E R. Mm -hmm. Fiverr is a Gives you access to a labor pool of people in Bosnia and Afghanistan. <laughs> and for pennies, they will drive up your downloads by the thousands. Oh, really? And sometimes I look at some of the people getting a million downloads, two million downloads, and I'm like, there is no way in hell that two million Americans are listening to that podcast. No way in hell. Mm -hmm. And they're not. You pay this, uh, you go to Fiverr, you tell them what you're looking for, you say, I need downloads. You'll be contacted by three or four people from Af Afghanistan or Bosnia. Mm -hmm. They'll say, for $190, I'll get you a million downloads. Wow. And here's the best part, Alex, it's true. So I was bored once, mm -hmm. and I said, 
the, the, the kid says, what do you want? Mm -hmm. And I said, I want to be in the top 50 of, of iTunes likes. I want to be in the top 50 of iTunes, the, the list of iTunes podcasts, iTunes podcasts. He says, when do you want it? I said, I don't know, a week. In six days, I was like 30. 30 what? I was on the page where you see the oh, little squares. Oh, you were 30. Squares, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. The right. little squares of Apple iTunes yeah, uh, right, right, podcasts. Right. And you see, you know, one through 50. I was like the 30th uh, in rank. Now, do you have to pay them constantly to do this? No. No, they do it once and it stays there for a while? No, it doesn't stay there. It refreshes all the time. But I just wanted to see if it would happen. Yeah. And it did. Wow. Hey, listen, we've run out of time here. I want to do. Right. I want to do this again. I like talking to you, Walter. And uh, well, no one says that to me, so well, I appreciate yeah, that. We just, Thank you. Yeah, and uh, you know, uh, uh, it, my best to you and your family. And stay online when we're through here, so I can say goodbye to you personally. But, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is Walter Sabo. Thank you, Walter. Mr. Marjorie. Oh, I certainly will. Bye. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, everybody. Now, oh, wait a minute. i got to turn on my lights. There we go. Ah, yeah. I, uh, I'm, I'm lazy with everything now. Nothing. I can't do anything anymore. I really, I'm, 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 I'm fed up with myself. Oh man! Hey, listen. I gotta tell you something. Um, well, maybe I should save it for the uh, for the citizen panel. But there doesn't seem to be many people out there ready to be a citizen panel right now. So I guess I could start talking. Well, let me let me bring them in. What the hell? Uh, and we'll see if anybody else joins us tonight. Uh, let's see here. There we go. There we go. There's Alan, and there's me, and there's Trucker Steve, and Charlie Wallace should be joining us shortly. Joining us shortly. Yeah, wait a minute. Uh, Charlie Wallace. There we go. Here he comes. All right. Anyway, how are you doing tonight, everybody? I'm good. Oh, good. Okay. Getting over my cold. Getting over your cold. How about you, Charlie? You doing Okay. Governor Abbott is still a dick. Huh? Yeah, Governor Abbott is still a dick. <laughs> well, I guess you're never going to be able to go back to that big, high-paying job you once had because they'll hold it against you. <laughs> no, no, I've burned my bridges. Yeah, you burned your bridges a long time ago. Well, let me see here. So anyway, I want to, uh, something I want to bring up to you. This is, this is kind of an interesting thing that happened to me today. So I've been... You know, I keep talking about the nice pill I take, this pregabalin. Well, I wanted to lower the amount that I was taking, okay? So I asked the doctor to put in for a slow, uh, a, a less of a, of a dose, go from 150s to 100s, which would do the job and at the same time um, help take care of it. Well, we had a lot of trouble just getting to be able to get me off the 150s and onto the 100s, right? So here's what happened. When I was getting the 150s, I would get 90 of them, and they cost me $33 for, for 90 pills, right? Yeah. Today, I get, they say, okay, we finally have approved this thing, and you're now going to get the, uh, the other stuff. You're going to get the uh, 100s, and uh, this will be, um, the 100s uh, uh, will give you uh, 90 of those each month, all right? And the price is $55, or $58, <laughs> rather $58. And I'm thinking to myself, wait a minute, this is ridiculous. So I asked them why, and they say, well, I don't know. If you bought the 150s, they're cheaper than the 100s. Now, does that make sense in anybody's practical world? Absolutely. And, and I went online to, I went on to them. Wait a minute, you're going to give me an answer on why, uh, Al, uh, uh, Alan, but you're going to be wrong. Go ahead. <laughs> I, my idea is more people take the 150 than take the 100, or they buy it from the 100s from a different supplier. No, they don't buy them from a different supplier. 
How do you okay. know where they buy them from? Because they they told me. Oh. They checked to see if they were buying them from a different supplier, if that was causing them a problem. Oh. And that wasn't causing them a problem. Okay, so what's the reason? They have no reason. They went, well, you know, because here's what happens. I looked at the 25s. They were cheaper. They were, and then a little more expensive were the 50s. And then a little more expensive were the 75s. All of a sudden, the 100s doubled in price. The 150s went down by 50%. And the, if you wanted to get 200s, they were just a little bit higher than the 150s. In other words, for some reason, in the middle of all of that, the 100s cost that. So I said to them, isn't there something wrong with that? And they said, it doesn't seem yeah. right. You know? So they're checking into it for me. And they'll give me a refund if they find out why. This uh, is Costco? This is Costco, Yeah. But it, it, they said it. the supplier is supplying it to them at that price. And there's no reason why they should be supplying them at that price. But this goes on all the time with medicines. I mean, I remember once that I, I used to take uh, a, a anti, uh, what do you call it, uptake re-inhibitor or whatever those things were, you know. S-S-R-I? S-R-I or whatever they were. Serotonin. Yeah, reuptake inhibitors, yeah. Right. And this was a long time ago. This is when I knew um, Schmoody over here. And uh, when she was uh, hanging around with me. And I would uh, go and I, I was going to get it. And I got the, like, I don't know. I, let, let's just say for, I don't know what the, the strength were. But let's just say it was a 25, Okay. So uh, I go in, the 25s cost me, let's say, $25. So I went, well, let me see here. Why don't I, w w w I said to the doctor, I said, is there any cheaper way of doing this? He said, yeah, you can get the hundreds, and then you can just break them in quarters and use them that way. And I said, what's the difference in price going to be? He says, go ask them, you'll be surprised. I asked what the difference was between the 25s and the 100s, and it was almost the same exact price. So I got four times the, the pills for, you know, the same price. It was ridiculous. And that's the way medicine, and I said to my doctor the next time I saw him, why do they do that? And he said, no explanation. It's just if you go up in a higher dosage, the price doesn't necessarily jump, you know, an equal amount. But in this case, we don't have that kind of situation. We have a situation where in the middle of all their different strengths, all of a sudden one of them is double the price of any of the others. It does not make sense at all. And I don't buy that, you know, because more people buy the hundreds or buy the 150s than buy the hundreds. Then why are they making the 25s? And why are they making the 50s? And why are they making the 75s? And why are they making the... Do you have an answer to that, Charlie? Because it looks like you may have taken a drug similar to that, like gabapentin or whatever. I took gabapentin for about four years. And uh, it was a similar thing. When when I, at first I was taking uh, um, 100 milligrams. Mm -hmm. Then I went up to 300 milligrams. And you would think it'd be three times the cost, but it was it was barely ten percent more. Yeah, but but the so, one you were getting that was less than the say the three hundreds you were getting maybe the hundreds, and then you got the three hundreds. The hundreds weren't double yeah. the price of the three hundreds. Get what I'm saying? No, no, no. So yeah. so you're not faced. It's 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 strange. It's weird. And and yet, you know, with the government going, oh, we're we're out to help the public and we're going to do this and we're going to do that. Why are they checking into this kind of bullshit? You well, know? they can't. There's a law that they can't they can't uh, what you call it? they can't negotiate uh, prescription prices. That's a law. That's well, got to be changed by Congress. Well, it isn't a question of of of, uh, of doing that. We we took that guy in before Congress who suddenly raised the price on a uh, AIDS pill or whatever, like quadruple, right? So we took him yep. to task. In fact, he wound up in jail. So, I mean, this well, falls... that was for something else. But, no, but this falls in that same category. This isn't for purchasing power on the part of the government. It's what the average public is paying for something and why one pill of a lower strength is double the price of a pill of a higher strength made by the same company 
and and distributed by the same distributor. Yeah. Somebody ought to ask some questions about this, you know. Uh, hello there, Schmoody. How are you? Hi. Yeah. 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 You, you don't know what I'm talking about, do you? Because you're not in that kind of medicine. No, you, are, aren't you talking about pharmaceuticals and the yeah. price? Yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah. not a big fan of uh, big pharma. Yeah. I mean, just ridiculous. Just, uh, you know. And uh, all, all I wanted, actually the reason I went down to the 100s was I, I said to my doctor, well, I'd like to do the lesser ones. And then he did it for 30 pills a month. And it was a certain price. And I said, well, it was cheaper when I was getting the 150s and getting 90 of them. So why don't you write me for 90? So he wrote me for 90. And then I had to go through a whole bunch of hoops in order to get that done. And uh, it turns out now that I'm actually paying more because there's this, I don't know, weird little loophole they've got going there. It's very strange. <coughs> so I don't know. I give up, you know. All of it bothers me. It is vexing to this person. Mm -hmm. So anyway, uh, any any ideas, uh, 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 Kevin? Do you have to, you have to deal with medication a lot? Do you have any weird anomalies like this in the cost of medication? Yeah, all the time. Yeah, uh, I don't even try and figure it out. You just pay. I just order it through insurance. They pay it, and I pay ten bucks and say goodbye. Yeah, well, I I uh, I don't want to buy it through my insurance because my insurance has a a uh, what do you call it a what do they call it a pay some I have to pay out about four hundred and fifty bucks before I get it at the lower oh, price. Oh. Huh? Deductible. The deductible. Yeah. yeah. Deductible, so yeah. I found out that by going through uh, Costco, I was getting it cheaper. About or about for the same price as I would once I'd gotten through my deductible. Yeah, so see, I, just, I don't have to do that. You know, I, it, yeah, it's me. just ridiculous. Just ridiculous. I have Kaiser, ten dollars a strip. Yeah, well, you know, you're <laughs> you're very what. lucky. I got thrown out to the dogs by my union. It's not <laughs> luck. I pay for my own insurance. Do you pay for your own insurance? Yeah. So how much does Kaiser cost you? How much? Twelve hundred a month. Oh Jesus! What? Yeah, Kaiser's twelve hundred a month if you're not with like some group plan or whatever. Well, Blue Blue Cross and Blue Shield are like double that, and you, and you got an eighty twenty plan. You got to pay twenty percent of everything, and it's almost Kaiser, it's, it, it's almost cheaper to die, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, uh, I just you know, I mean, and I. You know, I I wanted just wanted the lower dose because I found the higher dose was kind of making me loopy, and I've got I've, I've saved enough pills that I've got a year's worth of the one fifties. I don't even need to buy them for the next year. Break them in half, huh? You can't break them in half. The capsules. Yeah. What do you do with capsules? I guess you could empty them half out, right? Sure. Why yeah. not? Yeah. Yeah. But the reason they do capsules is that's what another way they with, make with more money. Out. What? What'd you say? Did Charlie say something? What do you do with the powder you dump out? If, if you dump them out of the capsule. I know, you put it over to the side. That has something to put them in. Yeah, I don't know. What you do is you put it over to the side and then later oh, uh, on, on a mirror and you snort it later. I was just thinking the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know. And there, there, there's your answer right there. Unless folks. you pour it out, you lick that. Yeah, yeah, and you go. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I'm so glad I don't have to take pharmaceuticals. Well, why don't you? Because I'm healthy. Well, but you know, the day will come when you will. How do you know? Well, how old are you now, Missy? Uh, Fifty-six. Fifty-six. Okay, once you hit sixty-five. You'll go to the doctor for something because it's your body ain't working like it should, and then he gives you a pill. All right, and then one day you wake up when you're about seventy-five and you look in your pill box and there are like seven pills there. Mm -hmm. And then you look at it about five years later and there are ten pills there. Twelve. I yeah, and uh, I think I could probably quit half of these things and and probably not die. But they always they keep 
another pill, another, and the older you get, the more vicarious they get with the pills. Oh, hell, you know, this stuff is addictive, but hey, at your age, what's, you know, what, what's the problem, you know? Uh, so anyway, I don't know. I mean, how many pills do you take, uh, Jeff? I mean, you had a stroke. Oh, at, least, then... at least 12. At least 12? Yeah. I take seven, and I could eliminate. That's for a day. That's per day. Yeah. yeah, you know, some of them I have to take early in the morning and then at the end of the day. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, my doctors never tell me take this at night, take this during the day. The only one that I take at night is the pregabalin because it makes me sleepy. But I haven't taken it in a couple of days. I'm just, but it's just, it just I could, they couldn't even figure it out. I said to them, how does this work, you know? I mean, why is there suddenly that high price for the lower dosage? And he said, beats me. And then he called the procurer who procures the drugs for Costco, and they said, this doesn't smell right. You know, so they're looking into it. You know. Alex, always the troublemaker. I was just thinking the same thing. Yeah, yeah. How many? How much? How many pills do you take, uh, Charlie? How much? How much medicine are you on? Thirteen. Thirteen. Take eight in the morning and five in, at night. Thirteen. Whoa. Whoa. Thirteen. Boy, getting your toes cut off is really expensive. <laughs> I'm trying to keep the one last four toes. Yeah. Oh, I last see. Last four. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. He had. Uh, he had. Uh, I thought he had diabetes. four cut off. No, he had. Well, I think no. no. He had five cut off. I, six. I, six. Six. Yeah. Oh boy. But you, you're okay now. The rest of the toes are in good shape. I've been okay since 2015. So. Yeah. Nice. Hey. I mean, what happened? Do you do you wear shoes with inlays in them or something that help you? I tried those, and then I lost another toe, so I quit. I just threw those away. Wow. Yeah. So what do you <laughs> you just put on shoes and just uh, you've learned how to balance? Yeah, I put uh, an old sock stuffed up in in the in the foot of my left shoe mm -hmm. where i have no toes oh that's cool that's very yeah. cool all right okay that's soft Ninja enough that it doesn't hurt. Yeah. yeah i used to use the same sock in my crotch but you know <laughs> you get toe jam in your crotch well, well, Alex? wait a minute did you do, did you did you do the sock i should have pulled the joke did you do the sock in the shoe to make your toes look bigger you know, is that, is that, oh, 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 that's what you did the sock yeah. in the crotch. Right uh, yeah, it's not going to crash. Yeah. You know, whatever. Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, I'll tell you when uh, years ago, I did a concert, uh, MC to concert in um, Houston, Texas with the Rolling Stones. And I was standing backstage as they were on stage playing. And uh, just before he went on stage, I swear to you, I saw. Mick Jagger stick a sock in his pants. <laughs> Great. So if you women out there were admiring a Mick's bulge, <laughs> wasn't it real. There. Yeah. Wasn't real. Cotton. So have you heard the latest about our former president, President uh, uh, Trump? Uh, number that, forty-five. Number forty-five. He started, I didn't know this. Did you know that he started a blog? Mm hmm. He had a blog going. He and stopped it's, it too. It's been going for a month and he just stopped yeah. it because nobody is reading it. That's it. It's amazing. You know, he, he, here's what he never realized. When you're no longer president, people really don't give a shit. Yeah. Right? You're so, a retired guy. Huh? That's it. Yeah. You're a retired guy. Yeah, they, they forget real fast, yeah. you know. And uh, so they don't care what you have to say. I mean, I didn't even know he had a blog. But they when they supposedly when they first announced this blog, they announced that it was going to be, uh, uh, they're going to be 10 million people who are going to be reading this blog every day. And I think they said something like some bakery site got more hits than his blog. So, you know. Hey, look who's here, Schmoody. Your husband. Oh, God. <laughs> you know, the marriage is going downhill, Alex. Fast. Oh, oh, man, that's cold. I got bunk beds she brought in. What? 
Bunk beds. She brought in bunk beds? She did. And she's got pictures of you all over the room. I've had so many stories. <laughs> Let me tell you what he did this. I don't want to hear about it anymore. Uh, all right, tell me what he did. <laughs> oh, my oh. God. <laughs> So it's, it's your mom's gonna pinch you. <laughs> oh God! So it has. It ha it so far, it's not a very good marriage, huh? You know the whole thing was a joke, Alex. It is what yeah. it is. My mother's probably laughing about it too. Is that, is that what you said? Totally. Is that what you said about our <laughs> relationship sure to other through. people? Say what? Is that what you said about our relationship to other people? It's only <laughs> totally, a joke. Yep. I don't know that guy. <laughs> I'm just doing it for grins. <laughs> you did. <laughs> He pays well. Yeah. I heard the Mick Jagger. You said he stuffed a sock in. I was wondering if it was a poop sock or a crew cut. I don't know. I wasn't <laughs> looking. All no, I know is I saw booty. him take a sock. It was Leave rolled it. up. Like, oh, he shoved God, it in his pants vain? and he went on stage. They're that vain. Oh, my God. Well, who do you think oh. that song was written about? That's what Carly Simon said. Really? Oh, I was just watching a, a, a documentary on, on Laurel Cannon, so it was pretty interesting. On who? The On Laurel Cannon, like the music scene. Oh, yeah, I've 60. already seen that. It's very good. Oh, Laurel Cannon. It's good, yeah, Alex. Did you ever go up there, Alex? Because it looks like the country, like almost like going up. You know, we're showing on. No, the I haven't been up there. It looks nice. You oh, ask me all kinds of questions. I, I finally have banned him from my uh, Facebook uh, messaging. <laughs> I don't blame you, smart. No, because, no, you. <laughs> My, my, I'm, I, I've mentioned this before. Every time know, somebody somebody messages me on my messenger, my watch buzzes my wrist. I keep well, that's cool. Okay. So he starts writing something, and he goes, whoops, I didn't write enough. So then he writes another one and another I one. I do that to my brother when he's in a meeting. And my wrist is going oh, like this, you know. <laughs> my brother he does the same thing because he's got the Apple Watch. He's in the city to, now this week working, and I do the same thing. And he says, "Hold on a second, what do you want?" You know, I, you know, Alex. You want me to cook? It, no, all right. Alex, if you put it on your crotch, it'll feel like a strange hand. I'll know it was Tony calling. You definitely would know it was me. Oh, oh, all the keep going. You get that idea, man. Oh, don't forget that. Yeah, here, Tony. I'll stick this on my penis. Now you can start messaging me. That's right. Oh, mm. boy. Yeah. So. You know what, Alex? I still got my mother's medicine that he gave. He gave my mother medicine, like if she got agitated at night. I forgot what it was. I have it in the cabinet. Only give it to her. It would kind of like bring her. None like of it had the name Oxy, did it? Oh, I can tell you. No, 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 no. Don't go. Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, if, if I get hit by a bus tomorrow, there's a ton of medicine in my cabinet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's compare medicine cabinets. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I would bet that Kathleen and Josh both take no medicines. Nope, no medicines. Josh, you don't take any medicines, do you? Sure. What, you do? <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? Oh, you I stop. take all the fucking I take all the fucking Percocets and Vicodins I can afford. <laughs> I buy them right from a fucking drug dealer too. Waste my time <laughs> no, fucking doctors. No, serious. Seriously, I wouldn't think that you yet were. But it can, it, one of the reasons is Josh isn't over fifty yet. What, once Andy, you get over, and he's very pure, huh? And he's too pure to take pills. <laughs> oh, really? You think he's pure? I think so. There's something very evil about Josh that we just can't figure out. You know? Dude, I can barely fucking walk, man. <laughs> I mean, Look, doctors don't fucking. I told you guys before they, they won't they won't give me anything because they say, well, you'll get addicted to drugs. You're too young for a hip replacement. <laughs> it's like, okay, so uh, wait, minute, what wait, do you want to do? Wait, so wait, they want to fucking wait. stick a needle this fucking long in your hip every day? Fuck that. I what they do? They do that to to my wife. Fuck. Problem solved. They do that to my wife, but they put her out. They put you, they want to put you out, don't they? Or, or do I they? I don't know. I haven't asked for forever. It's a fucking run around. They want you to fucking. They want you to spend about ten thousand dollars on the off chance they might give you some fucking pills. You know, the, I just fucking figured up one time I could buy about three five after, gallons. After this discussion, for that much yeah. money, and I said, "Fuck, yeah. I'll just fucking do that." After this discussion today, I figure. 
that the healthiest guy here is Jeff. <laughs> well, I'm not on any medication. I never took any. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. I was looking oh. at <laughs> caffeine. What? Oh, okay, okay. What, what? 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 That is not a drug. Yeah, really. No, no, That's yeah, what I, I, I put a medicine back. It That's said, <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you the name. I forgot what it was. Look at this. She used to think this was vintage. You know when it was made? 1987. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's vintage to me. A hug to my mother. I wonder where it was made. It doesn't say. It's vintage if you're 10. You know. Uh, I'm going to save it, though. I got that you got so much of this stuff. Really? Back. Oh, he's going back in. But he Go didn't, get some more pills. But he didn't come back with the drugs. <laughs> You know, oh yeah, I got the drugs here. Oh, oh, okay, good. Sorry, I asked. You can, I, know, any, any, I think, any the, I think these are them. It them. says take one tablet only if she gets really ag like if she got agitated at night. Yeah. But I hardly gave it to her because he, it was uh, L O R A Z E P A M. It's only 0. 0.5 milligrams. Lorazepam. Yeah. It like brought it like it calmed it down. She would wait, get like wait, nervous. Wait, wait. Spell that sometime. again. Spell that again. Yeah. L O R A Z E P A M. I got a door. Well, because I, I, yeah. So it's in the Valium family. It's in the Valium yeah. family. Yeah. yeah. Because when I gave it to her once, I noticed she got all like, she got like very, we were watching TV and she got really like lit. I, I waited like an hour. I said, Doc, I said, what do I see? And just only give it to her if she gets really, you know, nervous and stuff. So I gave it to her once without her knowing because she never knew she had this. And I, I walked by the room and I was waiting to see it take effect. And she was always very quiet, but then she's like, she got really like, she was going to the bathroom with the walker, and I saw her like, hey, my house are going? She's oh, it's so nice. And like, she was like, really like, I should probably take one of these. I said to myself. Take him down to but Central I, I Park and get 25 bucks a piece thing. for him. Yeah, really. Really? How many? I mean, I'm not that dumb. Let me, let me I got a dumb piece on the car. Okay, shut up. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> How many, uh, this is a common thing, how many of you, when you have gone into somebody's bathroom, have yeah. opened up their medicine cabinet and looked inside to see what they were taking? Yeah. No? no. Really? Well, That's I guess I'm the only slime bag in the group. Did that. You did that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Anything now, interesting? Now, I, I, but I didn't do what other people do. I didn't take any of them. Oh, God for you I just looked to see. Ah. <laughs> anybody yeah, smart, they, get, they send you to a guest bathroom where there ain't nothing in it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I was thinking the same yeah. thing. Yeah. 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 That would have been the smart move. Well. Alex, you use the other bathroom. How, how about, Alex, when you stay at a friend's house, mm -hmm. do you go through all the drawers in the bedroom? No. No. Oh, okay. No, I mean if if they put if they if they have me stay in a guest room, I guess right. I'm there's you know. Yeah. What about when you want to read the Bible at night? Don't you look for it? Well, that... <laughs> I've never understood that in hotels. Uh, well, no, you know why they're in the hotels? The hotels no don't put them there. Uh, who was Gideons. it? Who was it? The Gideons. The Gideons. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. They, they were this group of people who would go to hotels, they'd book in, you know, for the night, fuck their brains out, and leave a Bible. <laughs> yeah. I wonder why they... Is but I always thing? thought. Yeah. Wow. But I, I love where you open the Bible, you find all kinds of things, like somebody left a dollar, a used condom, I mean, you know, you can find anything in those Bibles. I actually, I was staying at the Sheraton Hotel here in New York. Uh, because I was, we were in from California to do the shows from uh, CBS, mm -hmm. and uh, I, uh, I, uh, we were at the hotel room. Two things happened. Number one, at one point, I looked under the bed, and I found mm -hmm. hypodermic needles. Oh, I would have left yeah. them. This yeah. is in a fancy ass hotel. Okay, yeah. I found hypodermic needles, and then mm -hmm. all of a sudden I'm sleeping, and it's like. I don't know, 2 o'clock in the morning, and I hear this hellacious banging on the walls. And I'm going, what the fuck is that? And this bang, 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 it just keeps going on and Somebody's on and fucking on. in the next room no, over at the bed. No, the no, no. I called down 
to the uh, to the uh, to the you know to the front yeah. front, desk. front desk. And they, I said, there's somebody banging on the wall in the room next to me. And he said, oh, that's construction. I'll tell them to stop. Oh. I'm going at two in the morning. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were constru uh, construction, two in the morning. Bang, bang, bang. He's probably Phil putting rugs in. Yeah. At least they didn't say that they'd be gone in 45 minutes. They got, they got 45 minutes left. What did you, what'd you say, Kevin? He said, at least I didn't tell you they've got 45 minutes left. They'll be done. Yeah, yeah. But it was like, oh, yeah, that. Okay, we'll tell them to stop. What? Hey, that's crazy. You know, what are you doing that time of the morning? We lost Charlie. We did. Sometimes that happens. You know, one of his toes goes out, and you know. No, what happens is he uh, he has a little. Sometimes some nights connection problem, other nights he doesn't. He claims that he now needs now our good friend here, Josh, doesn't have connection problems anymore, do you, Josh? Well, I don't know. Does it look all right? I haven't used it. Too no, much. you haven't. You haven't been breaking up or anything. Well, hopefully that holds up. What did you get? You got a. It's, uh, I bought one of those Orby things. Yeah, mesh systems or yeah. whatever. Some yeah. Satellites. I'm replacing that modem that I had too. The cable company issued one. I bought one for myself to just have. Yeah. A better yeah. one. I upgraded there too. So. Are you uh, cable or are you uh, are you fiber? Uh, I think it's cable. Oh, okay. It should be. Yeah. 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 And let's see here. We've got the uh, trucker Steve must be somewhere with good Wi-Fi tonight because I haven't seen him breaking up tonight. How you doing, Steve? Hi. Yeah. Uh, where are you tonight? Uh, I am at a Flying J just north of L.A. A fly. Uh, I'm in the mountains just before, uh, just south of Basic Bakersfield. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, on the north side of the grapevine. Yeah, I just passed a big uh, California scale. Oh, uh, yeah. So it's up like the Flying J, just passed it. Yeah. Now let me ask you, can I ask you what you're hauling this time? Uh, right now I'm empty. You're empty? Yeah, I had seven deliveries and I just finished the last one uh -huh. today. And, and what were, where, who were you delivering to? Uh, all sorts of stuff. Uh, car wash chemicals this morning. Um, I did, uh, several stuff. I did one, I was in Roll, was it Roll, Ronark Park? Ronard Park. Ronard Park. Ronard Park, yeah. yeah. She's her way north. Uh, area. Right. North to San Francisco, off the 101. Right. At Santa Rosa, yeah. Yeah, right. I was there north yesterday. There. Okay. Uh, that's right near right where I am. Yeah. Uh, you were around my neck of the woods. And my last actually. one was in Sandin. Yeah, well, I mean, did you go through Marin County at all? I did. Yeah. Okay. I yeah that's, well, Marin that's County. that's where I was raised. That was my mm -hmm. home, that area. That's uh, where yeah. that's where Schmoody and I used to like create like to create road rage in other people. Oh man, that was the best. The look on the dog's face. There was a dog in the car with this guy, and I started giving him the finger. <laughs> and the, he's yelling at me, and the dog is kind of looking at us like I'm not with him, okay? Mm. And 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 so then we, we give him a sign like, "Well, pull over to the side of the road." Let's yeah, have, man. We went pull over to the side of the road. So he pulls over to the side of the road, and we just zip right by him. You know, we love doing stuff like that. We were terrible. I'm surprised we never got killed. Oh, I remember we were in the city and we were in the Acura. And so, you know, the traffic was backed up. And we had just made it, but part of the ass end was in the uh, crosswalk. Mm -hmm. And this guy walked by and slapped the end. And I undid my belt and dove into the back seat and lunged at the window and scared the shit <laughs> out of him. I probably yeah, should these not. These are the ways that. we had fun with our relationship. This was <laughs> and then punch like buggy. It. Yeah. And then punch buggy. Yeah. Oh yeah. We used to play punch and, buggy. Yeah. Every and time Gary's old huh? Gary's old neighborhood was punch buggy hollow. Yeah, because what we would do is we would punch each other every time we saw 
a Volkswagen, a Volkswagen yep. buggy. Yep. And they go, punch buggy yellow, you had to name the color. Punch yep. buggy yellow. Well, and, we still and, do that with my daughter, slug bug. Slug bug, that's another another term for it. Well, it, But you, we had rules. Remember, we had the com commencement of the game, punch buggy. We had to announce. Yeah, the we had to announce the commencement of the game. Uh, and then there, there was this one yeah, area we went through that we knew was full of Volkswagen bugs. It punch just, buggy. And hollow. in fact, there was a repair shop with Volkswagen bugs yeah. in it. So when we're going that through this area, we're punch, we're slugging each other to a fairly well. We're black we and it, blue after it's it all. Uh, we do it for UPS too. Oh, really? You punch someone. Oh, yeah. you punch yeah. someone. And then we go by the, the distribution centers and just start pounding on each other. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I, I think, you know, if you go by UPS, you ought to just punch a Republican. I think that's cool. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, you know, Schmoody here worked for UPS. I know. Yeah. Which I realized uh, after I shipped dead. something through. I bet our truckers have delivered to UPS, too. Yeah, well, I realized the reason for that name was is that when I tried to send some for some computers and stuff and they came, showed up all broken, the UPS stood for, oops. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I've been doing eBay going on my 23rd year and I send strictly USPS and FedEx. Oh, really? Okay. Fed yeah. up? Fed they up? No better anymore. Oh, no. They've you never lost a package, ever. Really? Wow. UPS, whole different story. Yeah. But I insured everything. They're all the same. Really? Yep. Yeah. Yep. I've and had packages lost by everybody. Well, Fed it's kind up. of interesting. It's yeah, kind of interesting that Amazon is is trying to put UPS and FedEx out of business. Even Amazon's bad. Oh, they'll though. they'll never put them out of business. Uh, they're doing all the deliveries I get from Amazon now in this apartment and my house. My last three are deliveries Amazon. from Amazon have bl have sucked. Oh, I uh, what was it? Three, four, four times this month. I didn't get the package. It said it was been Three delivered. Of mine. Really? And they show you a picture of it, but you got to figure yeah. out where in your neighborhood that picture no, was taken. I didn't taken. even get that. It was just yeah. oh, your, your somebody else's next store. day delivery is late, and then you call them, and the next day delivery will be there tonight, mm -hmm. and then the next, then it'll be there the next night, and then it'll be the next night, and then your delivery that comes from Newark, California. To where I live, which is about <laughs> 60 miles, is in Santa Ana. Why is it in Santa Ana? It only was going 60 miles. Now it's 300 miles away. <laughs> and then they tell you it'll be there tomorrow. Don't call us until after 10. It'll be there tonight by 10. Bullshit. No. So I, you know, you, you cancel the order and then you order another one and it comes two days after that. And it's like, it doesn't. Well, they say I've got might, orders they, downstairs that I got to return because. The second order came before the first order. They they say, they they tell me that they they uh, that Amazon uh, it may have been the delivery may have been uh, marked as made, but it may not have been made, and you should wait until to yes. uh, one day tomorrow and the day afterwards call us if it's not there yet. I said no, I want my money now. They used to tell you that with the post office too, and the post office would mark it delivered, and they'd yeah. take it back to the post office. So that they would get paid, and then they'd bring it back the next day. Yeah, they still do that. The post. They still office. do that. Yeah. Well, I've never we had. Used I, used to, to, I used to do that with my deliveries. I we used to bust oh, there. <laughs> no, we used to bust UPS drivers for that. Yeah, UPS it was did a it. Cardinal sin gone. I, yeah. I'll tell you, there's an Amazon center in Newark, California, right next to me. That's probably the one you were talking about, Kevin. I ordered something that said, we'll have it to you tomorrow on Amazon. And it got shipped to LA, my, actually my new my new computer monitor. And from Newark to LA and back in three days. And I'm like, it's the next city over. Are you this stupid? Well, I know that the, the FedEx, I've gone through the FedEx system and I've, my, my wife used to work for them and I went through their system. And they actually, if you send a, a package from San Francisco to say San Jose. Mm -hmm. It will go to Memphis first. Wow. It will go over to Memphis, get processed through their distribution center and then back. But it will be overnight. And I've gone well, through it? their Memphis yeah. facility and mm -hmm. it's amazing what they do. Well isn't that wasn't that the original concept of FedEx that the guy yeah. who started it 
had come up with it as a project uh, for his, a thesis for his master's degree or whatever. And that they was They own the yeah. Memphis airport at night. Well, they shut down everything for well, FedEx. That's, that's what the theory was. No matter where you were shipping something from, whether it was San Francisco or Florida or whatever, it always immediately shipped to Memphis. Yeah. And, and I, went through is... that, I went through that Memphis facility at mm. about 9 o'clock when they were just starting to work. And airplanes were coming in. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, it's like our unloaded. Louisville. It's like our Louisville airport. UPS. Yeah, and they were but just you know... unloading them. Uh, you know, loads at a time, and they, these trucks would come in, and they'd throw it in there, and these conveyor belts were miles long, getting sorted, getting put there, back on airplanes, yeah, and going There was a time, but I don't think it holds true today, where if you send a package from San Francisco to L.A., it went through Memphis first. That's because FedEx started as an air company. Yes. During 9-11? Yes, you're right. You know, we were having you know meetings with the faa before hours and the fedex security sitting next to me and he goes what'd you guys do with your packages i go we just diverted them to the hub you know a block away i go what are you guys doing he goes we're dead in the water because they were strictly an air company and all air flights were grounded. oh okay so a lot a lot of a lot of ups's uh, deliveries and stuff a lot of their stuff is sent by truck from one city to another yeah Yep. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah, and then and then when FedEx convert converged all their ground and air and home and all that together, they kind of mixed everything together. Yeah. They yeah. bought roadway systems. Yes. That was a delivery. Well, it's not the same way now. I don't think they send everything through Memphis, but they their, used to. Their air stuff does go yeah. through there. Yeah. yeah. Yep. But the rest of the stuff has different distribution. Supposedly area. at midnight, that was quite a sight to see. It, it it was it was amazing, I mean, this place was packed. And you, see, I probably could have seen a package that I sent, that went through this place, and it was just miles long, and these packages would just go on these belts and get red and, and tossed and thrown and into another container and on a plane, and it was in and out in you know forty five minutes. But I wonder how these companies going. feel now about the fact that the that uh, that uh, Amazon is starting their own delivery system. Because here in New York, uh, they say to me all the time when I order, delivered tomorrow night. Overnight. Well, they're still they're still using the same model, I think, but most of their stuff is animated in the warehouse too. I mean, they send robots around to pick up their stuff. Yeah, out but of the my qu my question is, where the hell is this warehouse? Because the warehouse that uh, they must be getting it from has to be awfully close for them to get it to me the next yeah. day. And they I've have had a, big I've warehouses. Had Alex, they got big warehouses to get the stuff pulled and put onto trucks, and then they got what they call 50-mile warehouses, and they go to these smaller warehouses, and they hit the last 50 miles, and they dump them in there, and then they got all these little guys that come in with their pickup trucks and their cars and their vans and all that stuff, and they're all contracted out, and you can go in with your phone and your car and say, I'll deliver 75 packages. And you can throw them in oh, your really? car, and they'll go out and dump them all off. Or they'll have their own trucks in those 50 miles. And they cover a 50-mile radius, and they got a whole slew of cars and vans yeah. that go out because and Because right now, right now, I could go online on Amazon, yeah. order mm -hmm. something yeah. right now. It will yeah. say delivery tomorrow, and right. it and might be it. here by noon. If you've yeah. got a big warehouse within 50 miles, that's where it'll come from. Yeah. And or it will go from the big warehouse to the small warehouse and get dumped on the fifty mile radius. Oh, so listen, I I got to tell you something that I ordered from. Uh, but I'm telling you that the last three orders that I said were going to get next day delivery when I three hundred and fifty miles out of the way and never made it. I got to tell you something I ordered yesterday, and it's coming tomorrow. It's that they, they couldn't do it overnight. It's only cost me nine dollars and ninety nine cents. Uh, it is a product at uh, Amazon that is being sold as a creative, useful, small gadget. Anybody have an idea what a creative, useful, small gadget is? And I bought one for nine ninety nine. Oh, hmm? Swiss Army knife. You're looking it up, aren't you, Kevin? No. <laughs> oh, okay. Swiss Army knife. No, wrong. Any other guesses? Far smaller than that. 
The a sock the crotch. Box? What? A crotch <laughs> sock. Imagine no, my dog. A crotch <laughs> sock. Used, used one. A used crotch sock. This is a creative, useful, small gadget. Oh, that would definitely be a crotch sock for you. No. No. And <laughs> any more guesses? Give up. Give up. Mm. What? Butt it's, plug. It's it's a hat. <laughs> it, it it's a hash pipe. Oh, good grief! Really? <laughs> if you go to oh, really? Amazon, look it up. Creative, useful, small gadget. It's a hash pipe. Oh, I love it. Gosh. I love what you just said, that, uh, 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 Kathleen. That's funny. Did you, nobody what? heard it. No, she said. You? She I said heard butt it. plug. <laughs> I thought that was cute. Butt plug. It's a butt plug hash pipe. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, <laughs> uh, pretty cool. Huh? Yeah. You got to know which end to stick in your butt. And, there are more, and, and by the way, mouth. there are more things like that. Uh, oh, if geez. I look it up, if I look it up, there is also, uh, are you ready for this? Well, they have some hash pipes. They have them under different names. Skull, uh, uh, two pack of skull style personal decoration tool. <laughs> <laughs> that can be carried around. That's the name of the product. How about pipes for weeds? Sm oh, wait a minute. That, really? It says pipes for weeds, small classic tobacco pipe with five stainless steel filters. Here's the uh, funny thing, massager. Kathleen. Kathleen, yeah. I'm on yeah. Amazon's site, and they do carry butt plugs. Do they? <laughs> <laughs> How about oh, duck no. call? Oh, look, duck call F butt plugs. There's little whips and stuff for S and M and stuff. Oh, boy, Amazon really they take you anywhere, don't they? Yeah. Here's another one: detachable, portable, detachable, durable art screw personal gadget. I do you know. think Jeff, Alex, you think when Jeff Bezos created Amazon, he had in mind uh, hash pipes and yeah, ones? yeah. But I mean, why they aren't just selling them? It's like you know, marijuana pipes. I mean, marijuana yeah, is legal after in, all. Yeah. You know. And then I heard something else today from Marjorie, because she went out. Her friend is moving out of out of town, and she did all. She used to roll all of Marjorie's joints for her. <laughs> so she went out and she bought a roller. Oh, I thought she was going to make a roll like fifty of them before she left. Yeah, no. Yeah, so did I. Wow, you made a roll. Hold on, I'm not be over a little bit. I'm glad I'm not the only one. Well, anyway, <laughs> anyway. So, You're a funny guy, Tony. <laughs> so a, anyway, uh, she He's rolls them good. too thin anyway. I like my spleefs a little thicker. But that's why I went out and got a, a pipe here. Because the pipe is fine. Oh, really? But here's what it? I found out. What do you mean you put it in uh, uh, Marijuana is legal, I believe, in Arizona. And Marjorie has some friends who live in Arizona. Right? Yeah. Um, do you know that you can't order rolling papers through Amazon to be delivered in Arizona. You can do it and have them delivered here in New York, a lot of other states, but not in a state where it's legal. Well, what do they do? Just go to the 7-Eleven and buy them? Yeah. Yes. That would be a lot easier. Oh, that probably Walmart. would be easier. Yeah, Walmart sells them. Huh? You can bet, you can bet Walmart sells them. Well, Arizona does it to support local businesses yeah well you know i was i i never used to roll my own uh and i would always do it in a pipe but then i learned how to roll them because the what came along were the yeah. easy wires and those were the best papers to roll with oh really how many here know what i'm talking about or i have no care? idea I would, about. i'm gonna have to smoke bottles <laughs> what i'm gonna have to do this one time before oh I no don't do any it. don't do it no, oh, please. Because Shecky would say, "Don't do it." Tony, because I'm already Tony, Can you imagine me on something? <laughs> you're, you're enough problems as it is already. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, <laughs> and then Tony, I'm just ready to talk me down. Let's go get cooking all day. <laughs> then you'd be cooking all day with the munchies. Yeah. Oh yeah, you'd yeah. see me bake like four cakes, box cakes. <laughs> I need half of you watching the basketball game. This well, I, that's one of the reasons I don't smoke pot is because I do get the munchies, and I don't want to get the munchies. You did say that when you uh, you, you really do get the munchies, and like, did you have a craving or something, or is this? Well, anything? here's the problem. Here's the big problem. Marjorie got uh, into um, uh, this thing. Uh, uh, I mentioned Stu Leonard's the other night. Oh, I love that. Stu Leonard's 
has the most killer potato chips you've ever eaten. Oh, really? They make them there, okay? Mm -hmm. And they're big, it. and they're crunchy, and they're salty, and they're, they're great. They're terrific. She buys five bags at a time. Now, we don't sit here eating them like crazy. We just yeah, have it. If it's so big, you just take one and you eat it, and that's enough for the day, okay? Uh, but, I mean, I, I you know, um, uh, I, I, uh, if I had a smoked pot, those oh, five okay. bags would be gone day one after night? tomorrow. Oh, oh yeah. I could do a bag Dad, at night. do not smoke pot and go shopping at Costco. <laughs> oh, don't. Here's what I never. I, 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 here, we used to have, we have, to have a place here in New York, in these uh, stores, these all night stores. You would go in, you could buy stuff like, you know, supplies, food supplies, called Smilers. Uh -huh. But you never went in after smoking pot. Why? Because the next morning you would wake up and say, What was I thinking when I bought chunky chicken soup? <laughs> you know, it's got to be the worst soup ever made. Campbell's chunky. Oh, I like chicken. chunky. I love it. Hey, my mother's always buy it. The me. only time I ever loved it was stuff. when I was high on pot. Oh, and then there were wrappers for all kinds of things, cupcakes, oh, and you know, it was dangerous to go in there at three o'clock in the morning, stoned. Blame. Okay, because mm -hmm. the next day you would see the remnants of what the evils had been wrought by this. <laughs> Yeah. And you know the cashier was like, "Oh yeah, it's another one." We got a yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, the only thing I ever, well, for instance, Seven Elevens. The only thing I think I ever got at Seven Eleven. I only went in Seven Eleven for Slurpees. Yeah, I used to like the yeah Slurpees. Slurpees. Yeah, Slurpees. Yeah. Now, which is better, Slurpees or Icy's? Ooh, that's tough. That's the one. I like the icy too. I used to get the icy's, but I, my mom worked in the mall. Yeah. I, I think the it. icy is the high quality the Slurpee. I think you're right. Yeah. Yeah. I used yeah. to get that in a pretzel. I was oh, that because they came in a different flavor. Sometimes I would be like, "Oh, what do I get?" The How blue? about you, Tony? You know, or, we're, uh, Charlie? You know what we're talking about? Yeah. Yes, yeah, Eleven. I like. I love the ICs. Yeah. Yeah, but ICs you got somewhere else. Where did you get them? They were. You usually got them oh, in I'm movie sorry. theaters. Movie theaters. Yeah, in, and, yeah. and I usually get them in the movie. Get them in movie theaters too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, ice chunks are bigger in ices. Josh, this isn't up your political alley, is it? I don't really do ices, no. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, uh, you know, you talk about going into a store here since I had my yeah. hand up for five yeah. minutes. Um, anyhow, um, in 1999, I visited, visited New York for the first time ever. Wow. I got to the hotel, walked out, it's midnight, and I wanted a pastrami sandwich. All right. Yeah, and who do you ask? New York cop. The guy says, this deli down the street is open 24 hours. I went in there, and the guy in front of me was really high on marijuana, and he got up and ordered 20 pastrami sandwiches. And I said to the guy, <laughs> I said to the guy, are you having a party? And the guy says, no, I'm, I'm, I'm really hungry. I'm like, Okay, and uh, I said, you're going to eat them all in one sitting? And the guy said, no, 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 over a period of today and tomorrow, I only have so much weed left. <laughs> I'm like, I'll just take one. That'll be good enough for me. And the guy, and the, the cop was right. It was really good. <clears throat> oh, yeah, yeah. And how was the pastrami sandwich? Good, very good. It was uh, very good. Yeah. You know? Well, she I mean, got he, a he, how long ago was this? 1999. Oh, okay. Because today, you know how many? You know how many? Uh, I I believe I'm correct with this number. Do you know how many delis are left in Manhattan? Really? I mean, yeah, that's probably true. I mean, there used to be one on every corner, right? Yeah. I don't there are only there are only this three. On there are Eighth Avenue. There are only three left. Jeez. Really? Three? This was, yeah. Wow, it. this was on Eighth Avenue. Well, the Eighth wow. Avenue Deli. Okay. Cats. Or, or maybe maybe you were up there, and that, that in those days you had the the uh, uh, stage delicatessen and the Carnegie nice. delicatessen, yeah. and downtown. Um, but all they have now is the one on Second Avenue, the uh, Katz's. And that you was have, probably you, the Palmer Knox, the lower east side, wasn't it? Remember Katz? Yeah. And the and the Kanish place, I think, is there too. Yona Shimmer. Yona Shimmer. I think they closed oh. down. 
They closed. Oh, I used to come. I used to go all now, in the city. Here, yeah, now that's a delicacy that most people here. How many oh, here know what we're talking about when we say kanish? Oh, it's the best. They're oh, kanish, yeah. right? <laughs> they're. I, I don't like kanishes. Yeah, yeah I used to, she, we used to go crazy over. I used to go all into the. Well, no, I lived. I lived, I lived. I lived across What's the street that? from the from Katz's delicatessen, and then right next to it was uh, Russ and Daughters, which yeah. which it sells. Mm -hmm. Of food, you know, and then down the street, one block was Jonas Schimmel's. Yeah, because I remember I, used I to could pretty well gain thousand it. pounds mm -hmm. if I kept living there. You know. Oh, yeah, I mean, I would have been in cats all the time. I you get tired. Now you can't. Yeah, I hated cats. I hated cats. I, hate, I, 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 I hated cats. I hated, bit, I hated, like, you know? hated cats. I didn't think it was a very good deli. You were never crazy about it, right? Any reason no, why? No. Was... Because there are better de there have been better delis in my lifetime. I mean, the Carnegie oh. delicatessen. If you could eat the sandwich, because they were like this. Oh, they were big. Right? Uh, but uh, uh, if you could eat the sandwich, Carnegie was a great deli. Mm. Um, stage was okay. There was one uh, right near us up here, and it closed down. They've all closed down. Sucks. Yeah. So the, the I hotel know. I stayed at was in Midtown near uh, a friend of mine worked for City Corporation, City Group, City, whatever they were called. Citibank. At, at the time, yeah, the yeah. City, City Bank Corp. Yeah. office in, in Midtown, mm -hmm. like at 55th Street or something like that. Across the street was this deli, and that, that's that got to be the best pastrami that I had in New York. Yeah, yeah. But uh, 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 Shmoody doesn't know what we're talking about because we never went to get to a delicatessen in San Francisco because there ain't no such animal. And if No, there, just Luca's. Up the street. Well, that was it. Uh, that was it. That was Italian. Ooh, you went that to was it. ravioli. Oh yes, and gabagool. <laughs> you you got this really oh. fresh ravioli that you then put with in with their more. meat sauce. Mm mm. Oh, it was great. I miss my mother's great. meatballs. Yeah. They added some special sauce to that just for you, Kathleen. I yeah. bet they did. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> they certainly did. But anyway, so we've gotten through hash pipes tonight. Edible plugs. condiments. We've actually gotten the munchies plugs. tonight just talking about pot, haven't we? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Do you, you don't do pot, do you, Josh? I'm trying to determine if there's anything evil yeah. this guy does. I never, no, I really don't like marijuana. Oh, okay. Good. No, I, I don't smoke it anymore myself. <laughs> it's not nearly as good at making you high as fucking opium. Is opium? <laughs> I'm sorry. I agree you smoke, with you. You I smoke opium you. or swallow it in pill form? Pills. No. I mean, I would do other stuff if I wanted to. I mean, yeah. uh, the smoking makes you too drowsy. The other way, it just gives you a nice buzz. We'll stay here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm glad but, you're into the good stuff. You know. Really? Uh, <laughs> oh, boy. What a fun bunch of people here. Uh, I love you guys. Anyway, let me put on the music here. There's the theme song. Um, let me see here. Uh, we got uh, Alan. Thank you, Alan. Thank you for joining us, uh, Trucker Steve. Uh, thank you very much, Jeff. Thank you, Josh. Uh, and it's always nice to talk to you, Kevin. Of course, Schmoody, you're always welcome here. Uh, there's always a place for you in my life, okay? And Thank uh, you. and uh, jo uh, uh, um, Josh, uh, then uh, Tony, 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 okay, and also uh, uh, Charlie Wallace, he with the he the three toes slog. Uh, <laughs> uh, just uh, everybody give a big wave goodbye, and I will give a wave goodbye at you, and uh, we'll call it quits for tonight, okay? Thank you all. We appreciate it. Hey, listen, uh, Jack Bishop is next over most of this same gab net. He'll be doing his gabbing with uh, all you people out there. Uh, you call him, however, using Skype, and the uh, ID is GabNetLive, G-A-B-N-E-T-L-I-V-E. Uh, let's see here. Well, we're back again tomorrow night, our Friday night show, last show of the week. Uh, same time, same station in life, 10.30. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? And by the way, 
I want you to be good out there. I want you to go get your vaccination if you haven't had it already. There have been so many people in America that have had it now. If it were bad for you, it would have killed us already. All right? Um, very few instances. Get yourself a vaccination. And if you don't get a vaccination, wear a goddamn mask. And don't come over to see me because I don't want to get your cooties. Everybody, good night. We'll see you again tomorrow night. Uh, wait a minute. Do I, do I have another part of the sign-off? If you see her, tell her I love her. In the meantime, blah, 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 blah. Eh, goodbye.